Welcome back. Only 24 of the Fortune 500 companies are run by women, but the glass ceiling for women in biotech has been shattered by my next guest. Joining us right now is Vered Kaplan. She is the CEO of Orogenesis, a biopharma company specializing in cell therapy. Vered, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, here. we want to talk about cell, cell therapy as well as your leadership uh, in the business. First off, tell us, you say cell therapy is the future of healthcare. Yeah, it's a very exciting time. If you, if you think about what's happening today in medicine and drug development, we've had 25 years of biotech, right? Identifying the proteins that can actually cure disease. But proteins naturally don't work alone. They go with the cell that activates them, lets them know what they need to do. Now scientists have the option of taking a cell with the protein and actually getting these drugs to do the things they want them to do. So this helps to overcome donor shortages, right? I mean, that's one issue that we see out there. This kind of therapy can actually help replace or take care of that issue. Yes, there's also an issue of donors. Uh, of When you want to take a, a, a implant tissues, if you can do it from the same patients, that's a huge advancement, right? If you can f use the patient's tissues as their own source for mm -hmm. therapy, you're solving a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So it's all about making these drugs. That's the biggest challenge, okay? Because if you think of it, this is living material. These are the cells of our body. These, making these drugs, making these products is the biggest engineering challenge, so to speak, because you can't make them like you would make a plastic material or a chemical material. And uh, your main uh, operation is in Europe, is that right? Yeah, our biggest facility is actually in Belgium. Belgium is, very, is a very central place for biotech. If you think of GlaxoSmithKline vaccines, there's a lot of know-how there. But that actually services many U.S. companies, U Asian companies, as well as European. We've just opened up another facility in Korea, and we're opening up in the U.S. And, okay, so I wanted to ask you about that. Does the fact you focused on Belgium mean uh, the U.S. is less uh, hospitable for this kind of work, or no, not really? No, not at all. I think uh, one of the, I think it's actually very impressive how globally regulatory agencies have taken on the challenge of finding a way to get these drugs to patients. Yeah. And even though many things are unknown, they're actually working together. And it's, it's, it's exciting to see how scientists and regulatory people around the world are finding a new way. Because think of this, even a bone marrow transplantation is a cell therapy. And that's almost a treatment. But now you're moving it to a drug. You're manipulating wow. these cells. So the challenges here in thinking about how to do that are exciting. That is fascinating. You're, you're overseeing a business that's now six times uh, as large as when you took the helm. Tell us about being a woman in your business. Why there are so few females at the top uh, and, and how you broke the, the glass ceiling. So, you know, when you talk about gender, I think uh, every woman finds her own way to identify with that. I really identify with being a mother. <laughs> and for me, that's what, as, as a business person, I would say I take a motherly approach. <laughs> that is fantastic. I think, I think of my kids, I think of my grandkids, yeah. I think of other people's children. I want them to have these therapies that's when true. they go up. Very, we're very impressed. Thanks so much for joining us.